<laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> to the post-game lobby where I'm joined by Kreppo, Bedius, and G2 Smithy. Hey. hey! Hey! Yeah, that logo was hanging for a really long time. Oh, stress. stress cast <laughs> gets a free plug. Follow <laughs> stress on hey, Twitter. Hey. <laughs> Follow me. <laughs> uh, it's Mithy XD, isn't it? On, uh, uh, on Twitter. G2 Mithy. G2, G2 Mithy. Mithy. We're yeah, going to see it right there. Boom. Voila. There we go. There we go. Fantastic. Yeah, that's um, right. Did you know that you had a 2 and 1 and 26 KDA, Mithy? No, I didn't. The fantastic KDA. Yeah. That's so actually 28. I did the math. Tell us. Nice, man. <laughs> Tell us in your replays how much you look at KDA to determine who has to improve their play. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm trolling. Um, anyway. KDA is useless. Yeah, that's what I was implying. I know that you guys feel that way. Uh, let's take a look at some of the matchups, though, today and some of the KDAs. Starting with uh, the match we just saw in Game 2 between Schalke and Splice. A better start for Schalke in that second game. A lot of focus on uh, the Aurelia. Yeah, we were just watching that match here, Mithy, and when Wunder dropped here on the first dive, like uh, he got killed, and then later they killed him twice. So we were kind of saying, Schalke should have this game in the bag. I mean, here it was like, okay, he's he's a bit screwed up after the bot dive, but now this one here, this one, the, now now he's really, really, really far behind. Is this where you uh, pause the game in scrims and you just go to next? No, here's when there's like this uh, 10 second silence where everyone is like, <sighs> <sighs> and then and then everyone just tries to talk a bit, and whenever so there's another bad action, it's like, uh, can we pause, guys? Um, can we go next? <laughs> Well, we can go next in terms of replays as well, because how did Splice manage to turn it around? I said the, the team fights were very good from their end, or was it Chalka not pushing through when they could? I think just their jungler is always finding picks, you know, in a lot of these fights. I think Splice also uh, they just work as a team. Like, they follow up whenever, even on the back end of that first dive, there was a pickoff, you know, from Trashy going in. He's he's the better low econ um, style, you know. Trashy and Gilius have a very similar style, I feel. I don't know if you agree, Mithy, there they play, kind of set themselves behind to gank for their lanes and then hopefully play some tanks with uh, CC as opposed to Spirit and Trick, who seem to be more farm heavy in my opinion. Yeah, I, I think so, but I think just uh, Gilles just had a bad game, honestly. I, I think he, he screwed up, he got caught when his team got a good lead and then he did a good play by going topside, but there was no other play anyone could do because the, the other team was just getting Infernal Drake. And um, I just feel that uh, Splice's team comp was so much better, uh, they could just roll over uh, Schalke, so. Yeah, even the Kassadin, because that was something that you guys were like, whoo, I might have wanted to see another champion here, but Kassadin? I think Kassadin is just like, a champion that can lose you the game. Uh, yeah. He is the Definitely. one that takes a while to scale up, especially against an Azir. It, the lack of wave clear can really hurt you, and we saw a couple of times where, especially when the Aurelia was so far behind, where you get in a situation, the Kassadin is sitting underneath that turret, and they nearly lost it almost immediately if it wasn't thanks to a good response from the side of Splice. So, I mean, they, they played around it well. He did get pretty strong as the game progressed. And uh, I know Mithy was mentioning how he would have preferred something like a LeBlanc in that game. Well, the main issue with Kassadin is that you lose mid tower early, so they were forced to put the dual lane mid really early, which put Kassadin in a long lane when he didn't really have the Road of Ages yet or anything. And the the good thing that um, Splice had going for them is that Thresh uh, Jin can't really do much against Kassadin, whereas if they had a Lucian, for example, they would have actually been able to push in the Kassadin, and the Kassadin would have been really, really screwed over for the rest of the game. And I just think that when you lose the mid tower so early against, or or just I think the tower was chunked down to 20% HP at nine minutes, so that is pretty bad. Uh, for the for the rest of the game. Yeah, definitely could have been a lot worse. I think what Splice did great is finding some picks as well to get back into the game. And they yeah. seem a lot more proactive than they were in Spring Split. Our next replay as well, you know, there's a Civil Ulti being used to clean up some of these fights uh, in, in these games. Oh, look this at that Ricochet. Yeah, Ricochet oh. AoE damage. Cassidy goes in and out. And then they obviously will have the mobility from both Karma and Civil to chase down. And once you put this comp on the back foot, it's so easy to chase. It's so easy to roll over. Then Fox was out of position too. They need they need they need to be together as a five man unit or at least a four man unit and be able to kite towards the tower or to an as to a, maybe an azure tower doesn't matter but th their comp is just so easy to be rolled over it's really hard to make this comp work against a one three one. Mm -hmm. um, player of the game for us is Trashy. We could all agree on that one as you called it out. He is able to find those picks so good and just in other aspects of the game he's also quite good. He's not. An aggressive all-out jungler, so to say, but he's really good controlling. Is that the right way to put it? Yeah, I mean, he he's he's, he's just like playing some vision game. Usually plays tanks too. Yeah. Um, he's played the Nidalee like a couple of times, where I still think he's trying to find his footing more. But he's he's yeah, a really good supportive jungler. Where you take a hit personally, you know, you go for some wards, you go for some ganks, uh, Rek'Sai, Gragas, and the likes. But he makes it work, and he has the laners to back it up. Seemingly, I'm so surprised yet again that one single roster strap swap can. Get a better support for sure. Mickey is really good at the game. Unleash Kabe 
and then all the lanes are just thriving uh, with the pressure being relieved. I really think Trashy is just good. I, I really think he is just very good, and even though he plays a l l low supportive style, I think it doesn't really matter. I think it's just kind of how the team wants to play around, and with the resources he has, he's very good at knowing when to initiate, when not to initiate, how to initiate, and just in general, I, I think he also does a lot of calls for the team, so I think he's just a really good player, and this game showed. Because what I actually find really interesting is uh, last split, Trashy was not the, the jungler that a lot of people were talking about. And so as someone who played against him last split and someone who's now playing against him currently, is there something that you've noticed he shifted a lot in terms of his playstyle? Or I think um, the team itself has become good, which makes uh, supportive roles such as jungler and support uh, be able to shine more. Because when, when you're actually a good team and you're not just like losing the game because someone gets caught, someone does this, someone does that, and you're actually able to play a macro game, then you then it's when support and jungler s shine because you are the ones initiating the plays. And yeah, it's, it's the, the difference between jumping in as Braum, saving your teammate and walking out alive, or just jumping in and dying to like a bunch of skills. Yeah. yeah. Well, in any case, uh, good job by Splice. Final things maybe about Schalke. That is now four losses in a row this week. A very, very bad week from them. And almost all off that, if we could say, jump tilt. started by yeah, jump started by the tilt of that um, Nexus not fallen yesterday. I mean, one doesn't know. It's maybe, true. maybe no. Projection. <laughs> Obviously, it tilts you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, from from my own experience, it it, it sucks. It yeah. really does suck. Yep. But I mean, for for us, it was easier because since we already had some wins and we, it wasn't as bad to tie, uh, because we even tied, we didn't even we didn't lose. It was just a tie, so it wasn't so bad for us. But for them to lose and then not even being able to tie and then lose again today, I think they're in a rough patch now and they need to get their mindset. Yeah. Together, yeah. I think all of the teams who have gotten. It's a nice dodge on the yeah. S word right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All the teams who have gotten bad no one. <laughs> Did you. Are you throwing him on the bus? No, I, I like he wanted to I mean, say I'm something. I'm really trying. Like, and he dodged yeah. it, and I just want to yeah. compliment him. He's doing such a good job. Yeah, I just want to praise him. It's really hard not to swear. <laughs> ah. All right, we were talking about teams that need to pick it up because playoffs are just around the corner. And th with that, we also had the battle OG versus Vitality, who both went 0-2 yesterday. And who oh, OG, they just can't seem to crawl out of that hole. They are digging themselves. It was Vitality, on the other hand, that got a clean 2-0 sweep, although the first game was quite close. Yeah, first game was close, but like if you look especially at like game two, where we'll eventually get some replays from, that's where the Cabochard show started. The fact that it, it just went from bad to worse for for Origin. They stayed competitive in game one, but then game two, there were solo kills in the Irelia versus Trundle matchup. There was ganks working out, like the OG gank got countered by Shook sweeping in, so Shook killed Power Evil, and then Kasing roamed up to support, you know? So Vitality was playing against these plays as a team, whereas, yeah, Origin completely unhinged. I don't know what's happening with them. So, uh, because I was casting during these games, I didn't get an opportunity to watch, but yesterday, uh, Nuke Tuck in particular was really stepping up on that Cassiopeia. Did we see a similar sort of performance from him today? I think he was good today. Okay, he 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 was good. He was he was he, he, he was gets the seal of approval. <laughs> he he was not playing bad. Let's let's just say he was doing his job. He was not making any fakers like super highlighting play, but he was doing his job and not screwing up uh, mechanically. So that's all he has to do. Um, okay. we, I just want to ask, like <laughs> formally off of like Origin, obviously, you know. What do they need to fix? Like, where is it like going wrong? Do you think? I, I don't know. I, I'm I'm not in the team anymore, so it's hard for me to say. Yeah, hard to judge, obviously, when you're uh, on the outside looking in, and it's hard to judge for us as well because it seems that at this point, so many different things are going wrong, and uh, some of our casters have already come out and said, "I don't see them in the playoffs whatsoever." And um, you very yeah. harshly yesterday just said you think like the. I think shrinking. right now they're in preparation for spring 2017 because they're not going to make playoffs. Um, I don't think they're like. Can they? Can they not? How does it work? I mean, they they can they can still technically mathematically make playoffs. I just don't think they will. Mm -hmm. uh, I think okay. they're playing too poorly, and I still think that they're not. It's not like they'll they'll get relegated. I don't think Challenger can can bring them down unless there's like going to be some massive internal turmoil on the back of of these these results because it gets depressing. Mm -hmm. And so as this came out that he's like struggling with dealing with these results too. You know how motivation is being affected. Uh, but it's just a big hit for the organization. Yeah, we'll see what happens. On the other hand, uh, Vitality getting some...
individual players, team play, or that. Line and because he had this karma severe um, uh, zillion setup, it was so difficult to escape him. And the way in which the bombs were used from night and the way in which he was always providing that support was just so impressive. These late game team fights from Giants were just something that we were not used to seeing from them. And even though they suffered some early deficits, they did a great job of coming back into the game. There was this one phase where um, H2K set up a pick, they were waiting in river to uh, pick somebody off, and they engaged on the OAF. OAF escaped, and then everybody from Giants entered that fight and ended up flashing out. And that was a fight where, in the end, they went one for one in a trade. And the whole point I want to make is, if this was Giants three weeks ago, if this was Giants last split, they would have gotten rolled, split. And then one by one, one by one, they would have got sucked into the fight, complete ace, game over. But right now, they're individually kind of stepping up. And as a team, like, they make their team fights work. Like, they had super good synergy, moving in at the right time with the bomb. If you're Smitty J, get revived by night, you know, and they're playing together because the game one should have been a whitewash. Yankos was 2-0-2. Two, oh, two. Yep. Like, he survived on a sliver of health. The Oduamnes Rumble survived on like 10 HP too. At that point, H2K had complete control of the map and they just they handed it over. Um. I really think Giants is just a very strong team. Uh, in general, like what I mean by team is that they their decisions and their decision making is is either both consistent and also straightforward. They don't hesitate to make a decision and they know how to close the game. So. That basically makes you a top four team in Europe right now. Yeah, and on top out. of that, their individual skill is not uh, under under the average. So That's something that I really want to emphasize, the fact that their ability to close out games really is impressive because it was, uh, in game one in particular, it was it was somewhat close. It was very back and forth. HK seemed to have good control. They then get that Baron play. They get the, the four for one fight. And then off the Baron, they just do not let up constant pressure, easily walk into the base of H2K and close it out. They do exactly the same thing in game two and it was just amazing because this is something that we have been lacking in Europe and while there are still some mistakes that they do make on an individual level where they get a little bit too over aggressive, sometimes they misjudge things, as a team they're looking like one of the strongest in yeah. Europe. From, from what it seems though, it seems like the early game is kind of glued together by, by Maxlor style where it's very vision centric. Like I actually was watching some of the games and I actually wrote Maxlor on Skype. I was like, dude, like why didn't you go for camps here? Like you, you did something else. It's like, cause you could have been, you could have trashed the enemy jungle. It's like, no, 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 man. I prefer to play uh, for my team, get some wards out. He often also builds a second side stone. Mm -hmm. Mithi, uh, is it good sometimes to start playing in a meta game where jungle start bringing side stone? Does it make it? easier for you as a support to kind of make plays yourself and, and just get the map under control? Um, it's not about the support, it's just that as a jungler, I, from what I've heard, right, I, I'm talking here without mm -hmm. knowing so much, yeah. but from what I've heard is that as a jungler, if you ward the enemy jung uh, the enemy jungler's jungler, uh, jungle, you can counter gank and also, like just move around the map and you're, you also open up opportunities to dive because you know on what side the enemy jungler is. So that's kind of the whole sidestone yeah. tier two boots meta. But right from now. from a, a support support perspective, like I feel if you have to play, especially like one through one comps, one side stone felt like too little to actually properly yeah. execute that. Yeah, on to, on top of that, the the, the double side stone, I <laughs> always appreciate more words, <laughs> you know, as a support. It's it's always like this this small things that you you actually enjoy that yeah. you see the whole map full. Lighting up words, like a yeah. Christmas tree. Yeah. We can talk some more about side stones later because I believe we have a tweet about it as well. Um, one last thing about giants. We had an interview with Huslan afterwards, and he said, I always knew we were this good, uh, of course, but he especially talked about his relationship with Sonstar, and like obviously Sonstar is someone that we criticize, and I think rightfully so, when they just came in, or the bottom lane in general, and he just said that he felt like it was finally coming out what they could do, and he was quite underrated. How do you think they've evolved as a bot lane? Well, I would like to point out Maxlor and Smithy J. I I'll, yeah. I'll come <laughs> back to your question, because I think Giants plays very good around Maxlor and Smithy J, especially Smithy J is carrying the games a lot, and this makes Sunster look bad because when once you play to one side of of the map, it makes your AD carry be a low resource, uh, like low eco style, li yeah. uh, like husband calls it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, so that kind of makes you be low eco and look bad compared to the other the, your other teammates. No, I definitely get it. Similar happened uh, last split, you know, with Origin when they camped for their bottom lane, who was constantly crying yeah. for ganks. Poor Soa That's right. looked so bad all the time. <laughs> yeah, right. but if you uh, if you look at if you look at Soas this split at the start of the split, Soas and Amazing were carrying most of their games. And if you look at Origin two splits ago or one split ago, uh, it was usually plays being made through us on bottom lane. So it just kind of shows that 
people just flame randomly, but th there's always a team style or a team strat coming into I different games depending on draft. And in Giants' case, it's their bot lane that gets uh, the mo the least resources and that kind of. And what's actually most interesting about that is a lot of strategies recently have come in towards just banning away a lot of Sunstar's comfort picks because he does like to play these low econ style uh, AD carries like the Sivir, like the Ash. And when those were taken away from him today, he was forced back onto the Ezreal. Early on, he did struggle because it took him a long time to get the items that he needed to have an impact, but he still played in a very similar style of low resources on the back line, constantly trying to provide the utility for his team. Yeah, it's definitely a skill to play from behind well because everybody can snowball. Uh, but I think we can definitely notice within Giants also just the communication getting better. I think it's not that Sunstar has always been this great. I think you can aptly criticize a player when he's playing bad, but then you should also just, you know, reward him for, for, for growing. And I think that's what happened. Like, his communication is much better. He was randomly getting caught out all the time at the start of the split right now. And right now, even when he's at a farm deficit, he's just much more aware. And with some of the meta picks like Sivir and Ash being used for utility, it just fits into that style. Lothark also congratulated his team and tweeted after today's win. Thanks to my teammates, I got my first win against H2K after 14 losses in a row. With them, everything is easier. Of course, quite a, a long project in the Giants uh, <laughs> to get there, but that's a lot of losses to overcome that. So yeah. we have to look at the side of H2K as well. I would celebrate if I was them. Yeah, Definitely. just reminds me of that Joker, like something like, ah, oh, you may have beaten, you know, the Great Giants 14 times, but nobody, nobody beats <laughs> the Great Giants 15 times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one final thing then about H2K. Um, I saw Yankos tweeting, I think, sometimes it's better to get like an 0-2 and, and really improve than get a tie. And first, I know a couple of weeks ago another player said that and I thought it w they were joking, but is it so that you maybe rather have a full 0-2 where you can have like these two games that you can actually dig into than uh, that tie with that one win that you feel kind of iffy about? Is that easier to look at? Or I mean, I don't know how to answer this without bragging, but I haven't lost yet. Yeah, I was so going to uh, say. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> We don't take it as yeah, bragging, I, I just realized. You haven't answered it without bragging. <laughs> <laughs> <You're just laughs> Does anyone else have an opinion? Uh, from uh, Coming from somebody who is used to losing a lot, uh, yeah, I think if you get the mental, if your team needs like that shift and you get a little bit lackadaisical or you get uh, you rest on your laurels, then definitely, you know, a zero and two smack in the face is needed. But remember, every zero two smack you get, like your opponents get three points as opposed to like, the, the thing with a tie is like, yeah, you feel like you lose two points, but you also take potential two points away for that your enemy could have gained, you know, so uh, in that sense, maybe just, you know, try to improve regardless of winning or losing, just like Mithy. Yeah. I mean, one of the best examples to yeah. look at is the Unicorns, who initially experienced a lot of zero and twos, and now they're looking like a much stronger team. Let's look at the standings and see where they all uh, end up, because it has been shaken up here today. So G2 and Fnatic still wanted to, but then Splice is in third, have now overtook H2K, and then followed by the Giants. And then we have Rocket Origin, Vitality, Unicorns of Love, and then Schalke in sixth. Well then, this is your top six in week six of the who'd European have LCS. Who would have Yeah, who'd have, what is the biggest surprise out of everything? Giants. For Giants. Sure. Giants. For sure, I think. Yeah, hands uh, down. For me, the um, the Origin one is the most surprising, mm -hmm. personally. I think the fact oh, that they dropped down to ninth no, you could is, a, uh, is, is very surprising. Do I you want to change your vote? <laughs> Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, uh, how much do we think that this top six is going to change? Who are out of the top six is the... Are, do you most think is likely. locked? Yeah, most likely for you guys, or most deservedly. Wait, to leave or to stay? To stay in the... Uh, uh, I think Giants are G2. almost <laughs> <laughs> oh, G yeah. uh, So G2. <laughs> I think Giants are almost certainly going to stay in at this point. Okay. Mm. Yeah, it's like this. It's hard to tell. Like At one point, I think... All these these six teams are so likely to stay, but if we gotta choose one that can maybe drop out, maybe due to the the tick that they got, Schalke can drop out. I think the team that's most likely to make it in can be Unicorns because they they have the most like I feel like variance in their play. They can upset chaos. Uh, no, no, not like that. But like <laughs> when they do well, they do really well. Yeah. You know, if like right now, if Rocket gets the lead, there's a good chance they'll lose it. You know, Origin gets the lead, there's still a good chance that they they lose it. Vitality, same thing. Like, out of all these teams, like, in the bottom four, Unicorns has the most variance in their play to make it back in. However, I think this will stay our, uh, or will still be our top six at the end of the split. I think after this week, mm, maybe Schalke has a chance of dropping, dropping out. out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think so. And in terms of Giants, I think that if the meta stays how it is, where it's uh, mostly top focused and carry focused on top side and uh, utility based AD carry on, on, on the other side, they're going to stay for sure. I think they're a very strong team. But if the meta shifts and it's Sunstar's time to get the resources and show how good he truly is, then maybe they will slack, maybe not. We will yeah, have to if see. Giants has to start making comps like Nunu Tom Kench uh, around <laughs> Sunstar, <laughs> then uh, maybe they will struggle. Yeah, maybe.
who knows? <laughs> I think mean, it's funny because last year, remember when Tom Kench came out? I think it was you and Soa, so we were in an interview, and you guys were like, he's so bad, and you used all kinds of bad words. <laughs> Obviously, it's not the same Tom Kench now, but you did try it yesterday. Yeah, no, Go now now it has some, it has some mini tear faults. It's really cool, and you can like bring your bro with you, you know, and like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> best emotes. It's so cool. Best jump. Fantastic. Let's talk some more about supports, because at the beginning of the show, we asked you in 6.13, what do you think has changed the support meta the most and why? Uh, Mithy always knows a lot about it. Here's from the Vanetta League says, I think that with all the support item buffs, Janna, Karma, and Nami are top tier because they all shield and heal one champion. And we have seen that those were the ones that kept what? No, I think we're, we're forgetting a champion in that list, you know, Mithy, one that you finally pulled out today. And I, I'm just, I'm just being oh. really happy, oh. um, and I'm proud of you. But I just want you to know, like, you should practice them harder because I got this from a fan uh, yeah, today. So I hope whoever that, that fan was, oh, I deserve that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> I hope that you know that like, once you get good enough at uh, this champion, maybe somebody will make you. Uh, it's really a cool, by the way. Whoever made it, it's really it's cool. It's fantastic. Really, really cool. There's a level That's of amazing. detail too. Yeah. Anyway, answering uh, your question. Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it there. I think it's yeah. So uh, I think. Judging from the the whole heal and shield patch and everything, I st I, I, I thought the same. But it's kind of hard to get two items as a support on top on top of the side stone. And then people that want me to buy the ruby side stone and get the talisman too is, is <laughs> I don't have that much gold, guys. You know, <laughs> especially in competitive. So I don't know how they're gonna be. And looking at LCK, Alistair coming coming up and Br Brown being more played and. I, I'm not sure. I, I think there's there's a, a slight glimmer of chance that that's gonna be the case, but I think maybe melee supports are gonna c uh, come back inse instead. What about Lulu? Mm, I, I, oh I yeah. Okay. I, want, I want to say useless, but uh -huh. yeah, it, may, it may bites me back in the ass, you know. But I mean, <laughs> I if it I becomes useful, I that's fine <laughs> for you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I will play it if it becomes useful, but right now I think it's still okay. useless. Okay, the Fischl. Yeah, the Fischl likes be a thing. Lulu. It, Lulu divides One every support players. One of two champions he could play with Zyra. Yeah, it's just like it's just like you either are, are a Lulu player or you really hate the champion. So it takes like a lot hey, of players. I to was a Lulu player back then. How can you hate my first relegations Lulu. with Wizards and Motroko in the Wizards, lane? Wizards, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's Motroko. Good times. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun, yeah. doesn't it? Uh, yeah. Let's take a look at another tweet. At Robert Hebden likes the Ruby Sidestone buff, saying 200 gold cheaper and 20% active CDR is very nice with the new Mikhail's buffs. Very interesting. Problem is it it still uh, has the or the original problem of Ruby Sidestone that it makes your GP 10 items like not slot efficient. I really like the fact that you you can uh, get like spell thieves and then you make it to the blue item. You get more procs a lot quicker, you know, you ramp the item up and then you have more slots to play around. And then as you're building like your second or third item, you still have room for pink wards. That's for me like one of the biggest bonuses to like if you're having a really uh, slot efficient first item. The way I see it, um, if let, let's say, I mean, o obviously you need the, f the forwarding item as soon yep. as possible. So let's just say I have the tier one uh, go gold item and then I buy the, the ruby side stone. Then I have to get enough gold to upgrade my talisman and then get my locket. And then you guys want me to buy the Mikas and the Arden sensor on top of that. So unless this game is going to turn out to be a one hour game. Uh, but I have, I have the solution for that. Right now, like junglers are building side stones. Oh, we're okay. gonna get them. I, I see we where you're going. You I don't kill. Going. You don't steal their kills. You let them get the kills. You reward them for their positive behavior, which is building side <laughs> stone. And then you praise them too. You after the game, you say, oh, you know what, buddy? Good dog. Good dog. Your, Good your, dog. your vision <laughs> was fantastic this game. And then suddenly, you just forget <laughs> to buy side stone sometimes, and that's where you get all the gold that you need. I see. I uh, will not try that, but if you wanna g g uh, g take Krepo's advice, uh, feel free. For sure. <laughs> uh, in general, though, a couple of weeks ago, we asked you about the support meta, and you said I can't. I don't know. Right now, it seems that there's a clear hierarchy in terms of picks, but how do you feel? Um, how much liberty do you have in terms of controlling comps with the kind of support picks you can go for? Um, uh, right now, I think Braum and Bard are the m safest blind and Karma are the safest blind picks. Uh, you basically pick them if you have to pick support early. And uh, if you want to then wait a few rotations with support, if, uh, if your mid laner and your top are like, yeah, OK, OK, I, I can pick first, you know, and they give you that chance, then you can you can pull out stuff like Soraka, Janna, Tam Kench, Morgana. All these picks have their small, there's their, their small roles in team comps that can just counter a comp completely. And that's kind of where they shine. Right. I was actually quite curious because we saw a lot of uh, diversity in your support pool very early on. Uh, and I was wondering as to whether or not these support item changes would bring back more Soraka. Because I know in solo queue I've been experiencing a lot more of it. But it, it's still the problems that you were mentioning earlier where you're not quite getting enough gold. Um, well, well, 
I mean, Soraka is still good even if you don't buy these items. I think this this champion is still very good in in a certain situation because if you're not mid Soraka and you're forced to, um, I call it dog your AD carry on the sideline when you play the 1-4 comp and you have to like push all the way through, you can get collapsed on so easy. You have nothing to help your AD carry escape, even help yourself escape, and it just you just kind of can get rolled over in so many different ways with so with so many different champion picks. So you have to be very careful about wh when you play it. But if you find the right time to play it, it's OP. All right. We always see uh, that Scion getting banned, by the way. Oh, uh, sometimes, yeah, against, against Mickey. That's just like, there are these knee support uh, champs that you can play. If you play a champion so often and so well that you know it kind of, yeah, 100%. I was going to use like a Belgian translation, but that's not going to work. What, what? Out of your pocket. I was like, you don't say that in English. But say uh, it in Dutch. I, I don't know. Remember. Oh. I know. Go on. <laughs> but yeah, if you if you know it like you know the pocket of your trousers, oh. you know? Then, uh, you then you suck. Yeah, you book suck. <laughs> then you can you can play this champion because nobody knows how to deal with it, especially like science, uh, creep harass, or uh, going for the knockoff from the brush. It's really annoying. As well as random like support roam, Cyan ulti. That just tilts team. Oh, God. It's like, why is Cyan not being called miss, you know? And then your mid laner <laughs> dies and he asks you like, this champ is broken or... You know, truth is, I have never played against Cyan before as a support. I mean, I played against it like long time, but never really like experienced Cyan and learned how to play against it. So we play Splice next week. Yeah, they know what to do. Elaborate we'll bait. We'll see about that. Elaborate bait. He has a counter ready. Well, I'd love <laughs> to see it. Um, we're going to check out who earned player of the game to close out the week. Knight, a double player of the game today. I know, Vedias, you want to talk about it. Why well, his uh, Zillion was uh, yeah. honestly was very, very <laughs> impressive. <laughs> it, 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 he was the bomb indeed. Uh, the, the number of double stuns he landed was actually ridiculous. And there was actually one fight in particular which H2K could have won because um, Odo flashed in with the uh, Nar. He had full Nar bar. He was ready to get a multi-man ultimate off. Instant double stun coming out from Knight to then allow them to disengage and reevaluate the team fight. Yeah. It was just really impressive performance. He, he used to play it a lot during Korean Challenger and he's bringing that again today. Trick, another point. Uh, let's look at the overall leaderboard for player of the game because I feel like Trick will still be number one. Actually, yesterday he was tied with someone else. Oh, this is the same one again. Same oh, board. there we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, now he took over Yanko, so we have seven six Yankos, and Knight is Jumper third, actually. is balanced role, it seems. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we had, uh, who was it, Max Lor on the desk yesterday. <laughs> no, I don't know, man. If, if uh, supports miss every Q on bar, then they can't <laughs> get in there. <you> know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I deserve that. How good is Trick, Mithy? <laughs> he's really, really... Yeah. He's really fucking good. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God. Here, here it comes. You know, here, it, it, here is the right place to use oh it. Oh no, the Missy is unleashed. <laughs> Let's talk about fantasy LCS. Um, Expect is our MVP for the week in terms of fantasy LCS. He got 101.67 points, 17 kills, 38 assists in four games, 504 damage per minute, and 80% kill participation. How's that integration going uh, of Expect? It seems to be going quite yeah, well. Yeah, it's going good. We're trying to play more for him and uh, give Sven less resources. It's a long process, <laughs> slow process. It's 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 going well. It's going well, and the fact that he now can communicate and express what he feels and what he thinks is making things a lot easier too. Yeah, I think regardless of whether that works super well for G2 in the immediate future or not, I think it's always great that teams have a versatility in styles. And luckily for G2, like you guys have room to fail. Like you guys have room to lose games as you like keep pra mm -hmm. practicing because you gotta look to playoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, if you just play the same style and maybe the meta randomly shifts with a patch, then you're screwed if you can't rely on your top laner, and especially if you then look at Worlds 2, where top laners historically have been so fantastic, and we've seen teams that play low econ style only get absolutely murdered uh, in the top lane. I think it's great that you guys are cultivating like a different style. Yeah, we're trying to just be able to adapt to every patch and just kind of play every style in in its own way. Like, uh, well, mid uh, perks and trick are known for being a very good mid jungle. Me and Sven are known for playing good around bot lane, and now we're trying to work around snowballing top side and playing to top side so um sh these are things we should have worked on on the spring split but we are working on now so maybe we're lacking a bit of time in uh, coming worlds but i think we're taking the right approach to the game which is the most important thing just go for the boot camp <laughs> please no vacation <laughs> <laughs> just a final uh. plea from us uh for us here in the european lcs <laughs> no. Okay, yes. okay, okay, yes. okay, 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 okay. You got his okay. promise. Vacation uh, memes. Bring them, bring them. <laughs> a little bit of vacation, but we'll be back next week on Thursday, 5 p.m. Central European uh, Summertime to launch week seven of the EU LCS Summer Split already. Unicorns will take on Giants to start things off, followed by Rocket versus Vitality and G2 Splice and Fnatic H2K as well. Fantastic matches.
Yeah. Just um, a lot of matches that are in the same bracket. You know, mm -hmm. Unicorns and Giants, they're very close in the standings. H2K uh, versus Fnatic, you know, we can see if, if any of these teams can bounce back. You know, Spice versus G2 is going to be a cool test because I think the teamwork in Spice is so great and, and some of the chair champions is where they can... Yeah, it's challenge D2 at least. Maybe this is match of the week on Friday? Uh, yeah. Yes. Can someone production help me out? I believe this is the match of the week on <laughs> Who's that Friday. Who's cute, cute guy to the right there? And oh, match uh, of the week on Friday. Oh, That's that, that uh, would be all the one there. The guy with yeah. glasses. <laughs> no, 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 that was Yankos. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> so G2 H2K match of the week. That'll be a, well, one that H2K definitely has to try and win because they hadn't had a big week again. If you need some North American flavored league after our serving of European style, the NALCS has plenty coming your way today. TSM will be facing off against Apex. There we have uh, Immortals versus Team Liquid as well. So that will be very nice. It's going to be tonight. Head over to lolesports.com for the broadcast teams in your area. I think the CB LOL finals are underway as well. So that's some more league you guys can catch. Uh, yeah. Any closing statements after week six? Apex is going to do it. Apex They're going to be the first team that's going to give TSM a series loss, I believe. <laughs> you believe? Uh, nice I'm joke. really looking forward to the COG Envy game because I think Envy are really impressive right now. Mm -hmm. I think TSM is really good. Yeah, I think this so was too. your moment, but you've used your nah, one already. I used it. I, I can't go for two. I, I, I think Seraph myself. will get his revenge too. <laughs> okay. Great. Closing statement. All Bye. right. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to close off. I just wanted to thank Mithy. I just wanted to not interrupt you. But thank you very much, Mithy, for joining us. Always a pleasure. Fantastic thank insight. Thanks, thanks. All right, there we go. That's all from us here in the post-game lobby. Thank you all. And remember, we will be back at our regular time next week, Thursday, 5 p.m. Central European Summertime. And we hope to see you then as the EU LCS summer split continues. Good night. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye.